We've got match number five coming up, and as I mentioned, this is Super Sunday here for Grandmasters, so we have six matches today, not five like the past two days, so even more Hearthstone for you guys to enjoy at home. We've got Samuel Sao versus Blood Trail coming up, and it is going to be a Rogue Mirror. Uh, wh wh what do you think of the Rogue Mirror so far, uh, language hacker that we've seen so far, as we can check out Samuel Sao's list now? We've seen some, uh, some crazy games, a lot of back and forths, a lot of explosive starts. It's... Uh a lot of stuff can happen. Can, they can either take it slowly or, or take it quickly, depending on what the draws look like. Uh, take a look at Sam's Rogue here. He does have Zilliax and Chef Nomi in his main list. He's got a green skin in there as well, some cards that people have opted not to include in their mains. Um, he does have the one Blood Silk Corsair's weapon removal and uh, one South Sea deck hand to keep his pirate count at six. Yeah, and I think for me, at least from the past few days' experience, I feel like the ro if, if one of the rogues has double weapon removal in their primary list, it's such an advantage. Because again, because this is best of three, if your primary list is just better than your opponents in the mirror, well, you, and you take that win, you just you're so far ahead. Yep. Because then you both switch to you know whatever list you want, whether it's the primary or not. And what's funny is we've seen a lot of players have a primary list in rogue that beats Rogue, I'll call it, and then the other two lists are Anti-Mage, Anti-Warrior. So if your primary Rogue beats your opponent's deck that should also beat Rogue, well, you should win, right? That, that's the series locked up on paper. So I think that this extra, you know, one Blood Cell Corsair plus one Ooze in the list is actually it's way, 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 way more powerful. And we see um, Blood Trail's list actually does have that. So I'm wondering how good Chef Nomi is going to be. And just imagine a world where Chef Nomi was, was a, a Swamp, swamp Ooze, yeah. for example. And like, I don't know, I, I just from what we've seen this weekend, I've seen the weapon removal get the job done. Well, we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe we get a game where we'll uh, we'll see the chef Nomi take take the win. Yeah, and let's take a look at Blood Trails list as well, and then uh, we can check it out and it just you know highlight my point. There is well, there's Nomi and the Acidic Swampoos and the Blood Cell Corsair, so there's cuts in different places. But overall, I just feel just already looking at this as minus one Deadly Poison, but this Acidic Swampoos and Blood Cell Corsair dealing with those waggle picks and causing awkward turns to happen, I think is one of the most impactful things in this mirror. Also notably one SI7 agent. Um, one of them looks like it made the cut from Blood Trails list. Um, SI7 agent we've seen in Brogu lists for pretty Ever. much since the dawn of the... Yeah, yeah forever. It's a really good so card. So it's interesting <laughs> that we see uh, it being cut for uh, some of the other cards we see. Um, it's probably, like you said in, in, in past uh, matchups, it's, it's cutting some of those cards as a hedge against Warrior, which is why we might see something like Chef Nomi in the main list. Right, exactly, yeah. And, and these differences to the primary decks, it's I feel it's just becoming more and more obvious how important getting that primary deck just, just right is. Either calling the read great on your opponent and just saying my primary deck's going to beat this and they're going to play it so I'll win. Uh, fantastic if you can do that. I probably couldn't. So I would end up personally hedging a little bit just to be a little bit safer because this is, as I said, it's, it's only best of three. If if your deck is just not strong enough in the first game and you just get dumpstered by your opponent, then you, you can only lose one more game and you're done. Whereas you have to win two more and their core deck is just better than yours, you know, in, in a head-to-head -head matchup. We see there both players, so I'm going to on the left, Blood Trail on the right, just getting ready. Both looking at uh, cool, calm collects. I think Blood Trail, just a little bit more more calm. Samuel Sal seems just a little bit more worried, but I think that might be just the, the way he looks, to be honest, because we saw this when in the previous HCT where he seemed a little bit timid, a little bit nervous, but as soon as he sits down and plays, it's All gone. of that doesn't yeah. matter. It just doesn't matter. On the stage, maybe being interviewed sometimes, there's a bit of nerves and you know, just a bit more timid than some players. Yeah. But but yeah, once he sits down, like the game gets serious. It's just and him in the game. Yeah, th this matchup's going to be uh, uh, pretty serious too. So you know, do, do you think? Do you agree? Do you think the weapons are going to the weapon removal is going to edge it, or do you think someone else is a, a better? Um, option? I definitely think Blood Trail is a little bit favored with the uh, extra weapon removal and the. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just having two of them it helps a lot. You, you don't always draw the uh, Blood Silk Corsair. Sometimes you don't get Raiding Party either. Right. And, and just having the extra card, I mean, it literally comes down to that incremental advantage. We talked about win rates earlier as well, and one or two cards can make the difference. Yeah, they really can. Let's go into it then. It's a Rogue Mirror and also just a, a local matchup as well. Samuel Sound yeah. Blood Trail. Uh, there's a lot, you know, across the regions there are matchups that, you know, that the players aren't quite as, as uh, living as closely to each other. But this is just, you know, a home, home to fight here. Samuel Sao doesn't look like to have the best opening hand in the world. That Life Drinker almost certainly not going to be a keep. But on the other hand, Blood Trail's opening hand isn't too terrible. 
I like Sam uh, keeping the, the preparation. It gives him uh, something to use with Raiding Party if that happens to uh, pop up. Uh, he could even use it to activate a, a Miscreant on three, even if it doesn't get the uh, the cheapened spell. Um, I, I want to point out from Blood Trail's point, uh, perspective, though, he, he kept Miscreant, Shadow Step, and Blood Seal Corsair on, on the coin. Um, obviously, keeping Miscreant um, with the coin is... It's just what you do. Yeah, it's just <laughs> what you do. But but he, he knows how important the Blood Seal Corsair can be in this matchup. And without the Raiding Party, he thinks, all right, I'm going to keep this in my opening hand. By putting as a weapon, I already have the answer. And and, sorry, go on. And he kept the Shadow Step as well, knowing that... Miscreen is very unlikely to be clear on turn two when it, when it gets coined out, so he could either hit face, shadow step, and get more lackeys. And, and what's really good for me is as well, it's not like, oh, if I keep this, my raiding party sucks. Well, well no, it doesn't, because Blood Trail still just has two Dread Corsairs. He runs double Deck Hand as well, and a Captain Greenskin. Right. So keeping one pirate doesn't suddenly make you, your combo cards suck. It's like, it's it's absolutely fine. And as you said, the value of removing just the durability and effectively killing off most weapons is so, so, so much higher. Especially for one cost, too. Yeah. When you consider what it can do for one mana, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Samuel Tsao doesn't have a whole lot going on. He's going to take the uh, the turn to actually kill the Miscreant, which will deny Blood Trail the Shadow Step. At least on the Miscreant. Mm -hmm. Gets himself on board as well. Not a whole lot else going on. He does have the Waggle Pick, but the rest of his hand is not quite what you want in the Rogue Mirror, at least on turn three. Yeah, not quite having to just be able to activate that Raiding Party yet, but Blood Trail just going to use the Eviscerate with the uh, double minions there just to be able to kill off the only threat that Samuel Sao has and just make Samuel Sao's you know, follow-up just that little bit worse. Yep, fighting for board here. Second backstab picked up for Samuel Sao. Gives him something to do this turn other than just equipping a Waggle Pick and nothing else. He could just play a 4-4 Edwin. He could even commit the preparation if he thinks he needs that like, he needs something big on board right now because there's not a whole lot else going on with his hand. But uh, keeping the preparation in hand could give him a, a better way to activate Raiding Party or Miscreant and, and uh, give him some good draws. The worry for me with the Van Cleef play, even if you went to six, it's still quite easily dealt with from a lot of cards, right? Well, you did see an Eviscerate. might be a bit more difficult to deal with. It's not the craziest. Yeah, wrong, my, my, my worry is your hand almost empties. Is six big enough to win the game when there's backstab, another Eviscerate, maybe Waggle Pick with backstab, or e even backstab, uh, sorry, even a deck hand with a Waggle Pick over mm -hmm. time? It still dies, right? You know, is that damage enough to actually win the game? We see now just four mana swing the weapon. And now it's chipped off from the card that Blood Trail kept, the Corsair. And Blood Trail is just laughing all the way home right now because his hand is immense. He's got and Samuel board, he's got is, hand, yeah. The, the draw was good if his weapon didn't get wrecked, but it did. And, and you just see the heads up play from Blood Trail of keeping this Corsair. And as I said, I, I think the timing and the fact of running weapon removal is so key in this matchup the more I watch it. Definitely, yeah. Samuel Tsao spending all his mana, getting ready for green skin on a smaller weapon, but it'll give him something to do next turn. Blood Trail developing a whole lot. Yeah, and now we're already leaning into, you know, Leroy double, the, not Leroy double shadow step as a turn, but the double shadow steps, the Leroy, the deadly poison. Like, that's just the damage right there. This triple shadow step effectively if you count the weapon too, although it's not controllable, of course. But still, like, so much damage in Tamil Zales. Instead of, like, fighting back, he's just like, can I just get something that helps me do anything in this game to not die? Sometimes in, in Rogue Mirrors, when someone's on the coin, it, it can be a lot easier for them to activate the cards that they uh, they need to win the matchup. Samuel Tsao kept the preparation, knowing that he was going first and he needed some way to activate some of those powerful cards, but it, they just didn't show up. Blood Trail's keep with the, uh, the Miscreant and the Blood Seal Corsair, I think, definitely paying off here. It's a tough call, too. Yeah. A part of me was just thinking, are you desperate enough to play on that unidentified contract <laughs> just to kill something and maybe gain, you know, it's like gain a minion, gain coin, uh, so, so on, so on. Yeah, betrayal. So, you know, I was like, are you, are you desperate enough? I, I don't know. I think the daring escape is good enough. You have the the prep this turn to pull all these minions back. Well, the prep on the, on the spell, which means that you right. can replay something this turn, like the ethereal lackey. Maybe, still, still maybe fan. Yeah. I mean, I think you just have to have fan, right? Yeah. There's everything else just didn't feel great. So also definitely on the back foot. So there's ten with this. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. 
The weird thing is, with the lackey, you have to lackey first, then attack, then swing. Is this a release hole? This bounces the deckhand that's an extra and it can two, four, six, eight. can bounce it three times and then use he, the deadly poison still. He did get it. Or we can just bounce it and use Leroy. What am I talking about? Leroy's way more. Yeah. Um, not quite there this turn. Yeah, because he, he has to use the weapon, right? It's two, four, six. The weapon costs we can't yeah, Leroy, yeah. but... But he can, he can at least make an Edwin, push some extra damage with the deckhand yeah, if he wants to not? use a Shadow Step or two. Yeah, I think we're uh, arguing over minor points right now. Yeah. So I think Blood Trail's just gonna send the damage upstairs Why now, not? make yeah. Leroy lethal, and then uh, also there's oh, he's still room. Hold on that they can. Okay. Yeah, and, and plus there's still room for the deadly poison next turn with Leroy. Right. So there's, so there's, there's just just a so lot of damage. Much damage. It's turn six. These things happen so quickly. You look at the board one turn. There's just a one five and a one one, and then suddenly. It's nuts. Yeah. And just think as well. Blood Trail kept the Corsair. It killed Samuel Sal's weapon. If that hadn't have happened, Samuel Sal actually drew the green skin he would have been to buff to, the weapon yeah. so he gets a 5 4, an extra swing, and can pile on more pressure, and it just didn't happen. Samuel Sal trying to find a way to stay alive this turn, but I think Blood Trail's managed to find the, uh, the win here. I, don't, I can't imagine what could be discovered from the miscreant. <sighs> No clue, because this Leroy, is, uh, this Leroy, this Van Cleef is just a, the problem in itself. Yeah, not even, yeah. <laughs> save the Leroy, the, yeah, the Van Cleef right. on board is just big enough. Yeah, you know that deckhand Leroy deadly poison? Yeah. With Shadow Step on the deckhand too? Yeah, none of that matters, because the minion on board just kills him, and that was just a big deal there. Blood Trail takes an extremely convincing game number one, and... The, the problem, like, like I said, I just wind it back to the way the players are, are approaching the specialist format for League is that these decks probably won't always get switched out, right? They, they, in this, they normally have the anti-rogue is primary, anti-warrior, anti-mage is the two side decks, which means that they just go again. And it, yeah. you know, if this weapon removal is as impactful as it was just then, then we're just going to see a very, very quick series, I think. But we just got to step away and let the players just have a minute to decide what deck they want to lock in and prepare. So don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back. So you're probably wondering why I gathered you here. Let me take a moment and break it down. We've been given black eyes by the good guys. Oh, but that's about to change. Those metals mortals who mocked up our missions will finally feel some of our pain. You see, I have a devious plan that requires a demonstrative fist. And each of you will have your dreams come true as a fiend I spend your <sighs> Let me try this again. Alone, all our dreams went. Uh, yes, but united, we'll take all the candles. No, big figure. I'm seeing what you want to do. Let me hear it. We'll come together so we can dismantle. Now, here's the plot to capture your greed and intrigue. We'll take Dalaran for all that it's got. <laughs> As we form an evil Now the cards show me a tinker, so clever, but kind of a stinker. In a storm that's a raging, sits the last one I'm paging, a truly unusual thinker. All bots are now gonna go boom, but still, you shouldn't assume that I've made this selection on my own direction. 
No, indeed. Let's be clear. I have brought you all here, and now you're all in. It is time to begin. Each teammate I'm calling has stories. This tale's about riches and glories. Deep down in the earth, a king dreams of rebirth and refilling his gold inventories. Such a shame to have lost all that treasure. Join up, be a kobold of leisure. The cards now be calling. Someone new, no more stalling. And we next will be taking her measure. It's Blood Trail versus Samuel Sau going on here as match number five of the day. And we have a Blood Trail currently leading one and zero in this best of three, con uh, it's a best of three conquest format. That would Sounds terrible. The best of three specialist format uh, match here in uh, Blood Trail. I still think, as we know, the players are sticking to their primary list. So as I said earlier, that they're so hard tech to their other decks that they have to stick with the primary. And as Samuel Sao, you've got to be feeling quite bad, right? Because I, I at least feel his primary is just not as good in the mirror. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to agree with you. It's, it's a very minor difference between the two decks, but it's, I mean, when you have to queue the same deck again, you have to take every advantage you can get. So I am liking the extra weapon removal from Blood Trail. Right. Well, let's go into game number two and see if Samuel Zhao can fight back. It's not all over yet, of course, just because there's, you know, we're talking a lot about Blood Trail being favored. Well, it's like nothing's, nothing's 100%, right? You right. can't just say, I'm favored, so I win. Uh, so we do have to see how it plays out. Blood Trail does have, there you go, that second weapon removal, and he has it in his opening hand now. So he has it on demand as and when. What the next pickup means the rest of his hand, though, is... Not a whole I, lot going on. I, I would say he's got all the pieces to make a very explosive turn. He just needs the match to light the fuse, right? right. He just needs, like, whether a raiding party or a Van Cleef or something, just, just to really just take the turn off and, and make something big happen. Whereas Samuel Zawa is a much more well-rounded uh, hand, and the coin miscreant, of course, is almost the, the signature turn two for rogues when they are on the coin. Yep, miscreant in the opening hand again for Samuel Sao. I want to point out again from Blood Trail, uh, Acidic Swamp, who is he kept in his opening hand, he knows uh, it's important in the matchup, and uh, it's, uh, it's a good keep. It's valuable, right? They lose half their weapon, and they, they gain a minion, basically. So it's... Uh, oh, your opponent loses half a weapon, of course. I right. Mean. A couple options for Samuel here. Be surprised to see anything but Coin Miscreant, but there, there could be an argument for Coin... Um, Edwin, Coin Raiding Party. I, I don't think Coin Edwin is going to come out. He could probably make it a bit bigger later. Maybe he's even considering holding on to the coin for the fact that he can play a bigger Edwin later. Is he, yeah, he's, he's just a zero. is basically one prep away from an amazing turn, right? right? But I, I, I wonder if... Like, do you... Th it, if your opponent, you know your opponent's running a lot of weapon hate and right. you're playing rogue, do you think you actually put slightly less emphasis on raiding party and would lean maybe even, maybe even subconsciously lean towards other options if you have them? No, I, I agree. I, I think most players have kind of gone away from, again, we, we talked about this earlier on, people don't coin raiding party as much because you don't can't, you can't really do anything on three with it. Um, with Waggle Pick Cost and 4 mana, it just takes, uh, you know, it takes an extra turn to get there. Um, but but I'm I'm curious to know why he didn't play the uh, coin miscreant. If, if he's saving it for Edwin, or if perhaps he has some other th something else planned. Now though, I, it, if you're not coin miscreant, I think I'd be tempted to just coin deadly poison Van Cleef. Go right, maybe and that's just, what he's going just for. say you know what, let's just race because it, if I'm disadvantaged with the general way you play Rogue because of how powerful weapon removal is versus the pick, and then the tempo that loses you when it bounces a minion back. I'm just going to play a big Van Cleef and punch you in the face. And using the Deadly Poison whilst applying pressure with the Van Cleef means that it might draw out weapon removal on just a dagger because the Van Cleef is adding the extra threat. So if that's the case, I do like it a lot and it looks like Samuel Sal's going for it. And uh, this is like when you know you've got a, a, a problem to, to do, you need to change up your tactics, right? And I, I, I do like this overall from Samuel Sal. I think it's I like pretty powerful. I like this even more noting that neither player is running a copy of Sap in the primary deck. Oh, right. So Samuel Sound knows right. the Blood Shield doesn't yeah, have a sap. Yeah. I mean, again, a 6th Edwin isn't the be-all and end-all. It can die to some things, but 
knowing that there is no sap in the deck, it, it makes the item play a lot better, and this makes a lot of sense where why um, Samuel Sao decided to hold the coin for for an Edwin turn because he had the Deadly Poison in hand. And interestingly, he doesn't swing the turn with, yeah. the, uh, with, the, with the weapon. Mm. He has another Deadly Poison he drew, which he can use to activate the Miscreant or the Raiding Party, effectively making a 5-2 weapon and activating one of the uh, three mana cards in his hand. Yeah, and, and this, for me, whether this is correct or not, shows that, well, one, he's only really playing around Ooze. Right. But also, it's just, will my opponent play Ooze or just weapon removal in general if it's just a 3-1 dagger? Or will they hold it for something more valuable, right? And and, and I don't know the answer to that question. And that's the reason I can think of Sam not, uh, Sam, Sam not, not swinging there. But now we see the value Blood Trail is also putting on his weapon removal, using the Shadow, Shadow Step, Step and saying, yeah. I will not, I will let you freely hit me with Van Cleef again, but you will not have fun with weapons this game. Interesting. What do you make of that play? Because that is not a common occurrence, is it? It's not. I mean, it, this also disincentivizes Samuel Sao from even equipping Waggle Pick. In general, you don't want to equip Waggle Pick with an Edwin on the board because if your opponent has weapon removal, not only do you use the Waggle Pick, but now you lose the tempo from the Edwin. Right. Um, but now Blood Trail, or sorry, Samuel Sao knows Blood Trail has an Acidic Swamp who's in hand, so even if he had a Waggle Pick, now he's saying, I don't want to play it now. Um, but perhaps Bloodshell thinks that he, um, if he can best that, if he can get past this Edwin, then just having the Ooze on hand will make sure that he won't lose against weapon, uh, we weapon, I guess, damage later. Yeah. And also, what's interesting is uh, because of the weapon removal, then Deadly Poison is not an activator for Miscreant anymore, right? and that, that turn can't happen. I'm wondering whether you just play Dread Corsair and, and suck it up, you know, and just say, "I just need to." Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And just need to just play something and, and put some pressure on because he knows the weapons just won't get him there. Oh, I like this. So I like the Dread Corsair a lot because it does just throw something out on the board, and you need to be doing that. But it also stops a, a potential oh, backstab Ziliax. <laughs> right. Th th this turn was insane. But uh, Samuel Tsao's uh, um, Dread Corsair play also blocks uh, Backstab Ziliax cleaning up the Edwin. Unfortunately, Blood Trail happened to draw... <laughs> uh, the, the, nuts, the, the nuts, I think we, yeah. we call it in caster terms, language hacker. There are various ways you can phrase it, and that's the uh, part of the caster game. Just, again, awkward. <sighs> this hand's so awkward now from Samuel Tsao because the weapon's gone and the Deadly Poison wasn't able to activate anything. He's still kind of stuck. Does he play a 5 out of 5 for Does he play the... Raiding party just to draw some pirates. And he knows the second he equips the pick. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> it's and he just knows gone the and there. the minions bounced. It's like <laughs> so maybe he just plays the raiding party and draw the pi draws the pirates. Because I mean, he needs, to, he needs to do something this turn. Why not? Yeah, why not? I guess he could play a five mana five four. Perhaps that's the better line. Next turn he could go raiding party, raiding party, and draw the uh, the remaining pirates. And could also dagger up deadly poison. Yeah, and that's it. And, and then k just kill off the Ziliax. You could. And then just ask if Blood Trail wants to play the Ooze. If he does play the Ooze, he can double raid in party. And I, I think whatever it is, Samuel Zhao has to play this game as if he's got like, he can't do anything for one turn. So he needs to think, what can I do over, over several three turns, right. or, or four, you know, whatever that number is. So either way, he has to plan for the future here. And I think this is what this is, right? Yep. Green skin coming down from Blood Trail, probably. Don't see why not. I was just pushing more and more damage. This this game was looking incredible for for, for Samuel Tsao coming out of the gates, but it looks like Blood Trail's turned it around. Also, we might, we might if we're lucky, get to see an on curve Nomi. Because without the activation, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Just Seven mana six six. If this board state looks similar next turn, why not just drop a 6-6 six, six on the board? No, because that makes sense. Ooze isn't guaranteed to be played, because obviously he's not going to play into a normal dagger. And Corsair plus, you know, say he draws a backstab. Well, that turn sucks, and the Corsair is only going to get better normally l later on, because it's more like he draw a pick. Right. So it becomes free. So, I, I mean, right at this second, I can see Nomi as a realistic outcome next turn, and that will be hilarious. It's quite possible. Again, not, neither players are running Sap, so... Spending seven mana six 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 isn't great, but when you have board and you know your opponent can't really deal with it, and his, and these other cards are reactive, right? Yeah. So, so backstab onto the activates the miscreant here. Skin. Does get the uh, double time and double pay. Let's clean up the Ziliax, and the deck hand can also mm -hmm. clean up the green skin. 
Would you like you first to get to the four? Ooh, another snapshot. We're seeing a lot of duplicates. Yeah. It's about 18,000 mirror images and two uh, turtles. Okay, so that's a pick. But again, yeah, I mean... There it is. The problem is, like, the pick Dread Corsair just doesn't do that much, especially because his weapon's already buffed. He doesn't really want to throw away four damage to gain four damage in the zero cost. Right. Yeah, he, he can float the mana otherwise, so... The Nomi is going to be played on curve. Going to continue to try to clean up the board. Doesn't quite have the burst in hand to close out the game, so board is the uh, board is the game plan. Yeah, that ended up being a really powerful turn for Simon Sao. Yeah, he's still a. It's a great swing turn. Not not perfect because you, you've got to always remember that the picks only ever get four damage, and then they bounce the minion back for the, for your opponent uh, if if you blood trail, of course. So there's still time for blood trail. Just he's lost the board to a certain extent right now. Doesn't mean he's uh, he's out of the uh, out of the game. How do you feel about uh, Deadly Poison, Blood Seal, Corsair, Captain Greenskin? Just say, yeah, I don't need the Waggle Pig right now. Let me just put stuff on board and pressure you back. Like, you know your opponent's hand is Acidic Swamp Boost and two top deck cards, so you can't really put him on anything and just say, all right, I'm going to make a big board. I think I would do that without the Deadly Poison. Without the Deadly? Yeah. Go up to a 2-3 weapon. You can swing it once. It still ends up being, you know, a 4-2 weapon, right? After If you Deadly Poison next turn. Because if you Deadly Poison and Green Skin and then the Ooze comes down, you, you know, it's still a while before you get that pick live anyway, so I think yep. you could go halfway. Ooh, I, I like this as well, actually. Using the Leroy... Again, both players have quite a bit of health, and Blood Trail is almost at full health, so having the Leroy in hand, just sitting there... Ooh! Oh, that's that, a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice big taunt. Using the Leroy to clean up the Chef Nomi means that Samuel Sao continues to have board, and uh, will slowly take an incremental, um, I guess, board victory or, or valid victory against Blood Trail. And we can officially say we've seen Warlock in Grandmasters Week 1, as Nemzi is in that image. Oh! <laughs> there you go. Correct. Oh, that's a right. perfectly shaped weapon there to take down the the creeper. But now, you know, Blood Trail had a fantastic start and it looked great, but Samuel Zao managed to hold it up and now suddenly, how does it feel, Blood Trail? Well, that's what Samuel Zao is thinking it's now. It's been pretty swingy. Samuel Zao yeah. came out of the gates with the Edwin and then Blood Trail managed to swing it back and now Samuel Zao has won it back again. I mean, the, the, these raw games are so interesting. The, the, the amount of things that can, that can happen in this game is it just varies so much. Sometimes just one player completely blows the other one out and just kills them on turn 5 or 6. Sometimes you have these games that go up to turn 10 and people are fighting for boards still. Yeah, the, the times like this, it's just a Rocky movie, isn't it? <laughs> it's just like the, each fighter is just taking a stupid amount of beating, but no one gets anywhere right. until the very, very end and somebody fi finally falls on the floor and stays down. Even now, although you know Samuel Zao looks very ahead, especially with this um, this raided party in hand, is the, the big deal. But Blood Trail is only one to two draws away from evening it up, and the health totals are exactly yeah. the same. I mean, this is still anybody's game. If Blood Trail happens to draw Myra's, a lot of stuff could start happening. He's holding the ooze, can use it to activate something that's drawn, perhaps a miscreant, a raiding party. I'm a little bit surprised he wouldn't just deadly poison and proc the raiding party. Because if he SIs, he can't raid in party, and then he'll have to swing dagger, deadly poison, raid in party the next turn, which feels like wasted time. So I think he can hold the SI. Ha, this guy's hmm. I think he wants to push more on board now, just give Blood Trail less time to find that Myra's draw. And this sets up lethal. That's true, that's true. Pack steps, probably not going to cut there it from Blood Trail, is, and yeah. Samuel Tsao takes game two. Oh, okay, he evened it up. Did get a very, very good start, and just the the, the pressure that even even if you have to overcommit a little bit into Van Cleave, the the pressure it generates in a rogue mirror where sap doesn't exist is actually pretty huge, right? Yep. Because even if you spend three or four cards inefficiently to create a Van Cleave, um, then your opponent has to spend at least a couple normally to kill it, and maybe even over the course of a few turns. So I think it's a it's a good good game there for Samuel Zhao. He does fight back, and it is all even one and a one. So we're going to be right back to find out who wins between Samuel Zhao and Blood Trail. Welcome to Hearthstone Masters. Today we're going to share one of the biggest changes coming to Hearthstone in 2019, 
an entirely new competitive format called Specialist. Specialist will be the default competitive format for Hearthstone Masters. From online Masters qualifiers to live Masters Tour events to the pinnacle of competition, Hearthstone Grand Masters. Ready to learn how the new Specialist format works? Let's dive right in. In this new competitive format, players select three 30 card decks to bring to a Specialist tournament. The catch? All decks must be from the same class. In this regard, Specialist is a major departure from most other competitive formats. Amongst every player's three Specialist decks, one is designated as the primary deck. The player's other two decks are designated as secondary and tertiary decks. There are no special limitations placed on a player's primary deck aside from regular Hearthstone deck construction rules. However, a player's secondary and tertiary decks must share at least 25 cards in common with their primary deck. In other words, secondary and tertiary decks must mirror the primary deck with up to five cards swapped out. It is important to point out that duplicate cards count when comparing to a primary deck. For example, if you want to include two copies of Twilight Drake in your secondary deck, and there are no copies of Twilight Drake in your primary deck, then you must spend two swaps to include both cards. Unique or not, if a card isn't in your primary deck, it counts towards the five card difference limit. A player's primary deck is important for another reason. Whenever a new match starts, both its players must begin by piloting their primary deck. Only after the first game concludes can you choose to swap into your secondary or tertiary deck. You do not announce which of your decks you will be using in the next game, and you do not have to swap. After every game, this process repeats, allowing players to swap or stay until the match concludes. Importantly, you can swap to any of your decks between games, primary, secondary, or tertiary, including returning to your primary deck if you have previously swapped out of it. And those are all the rules for Specialist, Hearthstone's new official competitive format. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and start brewing your own primary, secondary, and tertiary decks to get a jump start on the new format and innovate like the pros. Let the battle begin! We're going to be ending this rogue mirror here very swiftly as we move on to the last game of this best of three. Samuel Zhao versus Blood Trail. Samuel Zhao fought bravely in the second one to be able to even it up. But Blood Trail still, I think, as both players are stuck on their primary deck, still has an advantage. It's just, as we said, just having an advantage doesn't mean you just win. That would make Hearthstone a really weird game, wouldn't it? Yeah. Truly rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, I mean, in these games, anything can happen. So it's up to the players to kind of navigate their way through the the game and try to find the best play to win. Yeah, and here we go. No messing about, no time to waste. Game number three between these two players. A quick mulligan from Blood Trail, nothing too mind-blowing to keep, at least. And then Simon's out taking a little bit longer, but not too much. I think with Rogue, especially in the mirror, you know exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, Blood Trail finding the uh, Bloodsteel Corsair that he also chose to keep in game one. Uh, Samuel Sal's hand is a bit Again, kind of not quite there. He has the prep, so if he gets raiding party on, on turn three, he does have something to, to use it with. 
And that's the big deal, mate. Yeah, for, for, for both players, having prep is huge because prep is the key that unlocks the most overpowered turns in the oh, deck, yeah. I think. So just I, I almost always keep prepping my opening hand, whether my opening hand looks good or not, because I feel like that one card can swing a game so hard that you just want to keep hold of it at all times. And now Blood Trail has the choice. He could have coined into Miscreant, but chosen to take a little bit slower. Whoa. Do you think something's wrong? Miscreant wasn't in the opening hand. No, but it was in, t in time for... Oh, it was still you know, in time. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's fine. If it's not in the open hand, sometimes, you know, the alarm clock doesn't quite go off. You sleep through it a little bit, but you but still, you still turned up on time. Yeah, right, you, right. Ju okay. you just had to run a little bit quicker to work. A little bit of bedhead. Exactly, yeah. Okay, yeah. I see. Not a whole lot of options here for Sam will tell. The second prep trot is kind of awkward. I will say, just having the, the minion on board first often feels really good in the matchup. Um, I think like the reactive answers or the the, the good reactions to the first minion uh, are relatively few and far between. Like, this is fantastic, of course. Yep. But if like if Blood Trout to use an eviscerate somehow or even a deadly poison to a certain extent, sort of lessens the effect they can have on that turn. Yeah, saving the coin, um, allowing Blood Trail to use backstab to, act to activate the miscreant means he still has the miscreant down. It's one turn later, but this way he gets to keep the coin. Samuel Sal looking for some development. Lago pick doesn't do a whole lot here. Swing at the miscreen isn't really enticing. Could play out another SI7 agent that you've drawn. As he has to kind of piece together how he wants to navigate the next couple turns until he gets something that he can mm. do with these preparations. It's, I don't really think he can afford to just use the mana because this turn kind of sucks. Just use the mana to just play waggle pick right yep. like if, if you waggle picking then you you pretty much have to swing it like he's doing now with the back so you can't just equip pass when you know your opponent's just locked uh, and, and ready for that weapon removal yeah, spend your cards do some stuff starting off with the theory lackey here for blood trail what he's looking for uh, these are super enticing his hands already kind of big i don't think he valid haze often is a little too slow in the mirror i think shift's great though yeah i think shift's fine deal of damage, draw a card. Because because of his hand now, you know, there's the double deck hand, there's the core server, straight coin, of course. But he could draw into so many good cards because it's, it's pretty soon with this hand, the only cards left for him to draw are good cards anyway. Yeah. So I, I like Shiv, but he did go for Wanted. Maybe just wants an easier on-demand weapon removal. And it, speaking of, uh, sorry, minion removal, <laughs> it was just as I was looking at the pit getting killed. But speaking of that, the, the weapon removal does come out pretty much on curve for Blood Trail again. And now it's just a big question. And there's maybe Ooh, the boy. answer. Well, Chef Nomi is in, in Sample Cell's list. Can I interest you in a prep Myra's Unstable Element language hack? It's, it's, he could wait one extra turn. He can't quite Nomi's on turn six. Mm. So maybe he still has to do it just now and pull the trigger and spend his mana. Otherwise, he's not doing a whole lot of else, right? Yeah, like he's. I mean, he can prep. He can SI. prep as prep SI and then prep Myra. Myra. I think that's as good Maybe as it's gonna that, get, yeah. and, and it's what he needs to actually win the game. Because we can see it's this kind of a handful of air for Blood Trail. But like I said, he's like one card, one draw away raiding party, even just at some damage or even a weapon just without the raiding party. Blood Trail's like one draw away from being having a very very powerful turn, and Samazal needs to do something. He can't just pass. Yeah. I like where and this he, is going so far. Yeah. If you're going to think about Myra's next turn, you may as well Myra's now and just have a turn, you know, to, to load up some stuff, see what Blood Trail does, and then if you draw Nomi, you can do it. Oh, goes for the unstable element what? first in case he finds Edwin, perhaps? I, I guess? Go it's for something bigger? Is, oh, oh so, he so, doesn't hit the Nomi either. Yeah, uh, he, he got Edwin, but I. D I'm not sure is, about is this. Is one card worth the chance? I, I Edwin? think I would have liked. Yeah, I think I would have liked the, uh, the the SI coming down. I think I might have even liked the second prep. You, you need to find that Chef Nomi, otherwise, how are you winning this game? I, I think I know what's happened as well. So Samuel Zhao did that with like, if I draw Edwin, mm -hmm. Edwin's already dead on board. Do you think he just didn't count? <laughs> Perhaps he was hoping to find because without he without backstabs, he without one Nomi. Backstab. Yeah. Perhaps he was looking for backstab as well with it. I don't know. Without Nomi, I feel like, oh, I'll get a 6-6 six, six Edwin instead of an SI7 agent and a kill on a deckhand. And sure. a card? Yeah, I'm, like, I'm not I, sure about that. I don't know. I would have slammed that SI and said, I'll take my extra card. Thank you. Blood Trail uh, throws down the green skin, rushes it with the Goblin Lackey to clean up the Edwin, maintains a, a wide board. It'll be difficult for Samuel to deal with. 
The fatigue damage is already starting to tick. 16 health left for Samuel Tsao. Blood Trail is still very, very healthy. Gonna be difficult for Samuel Tsao to... Is it even possible for him to come back? There's no Waggle Pick. These dread, uh, this Dread Corsair is kind of expensive. You do have Zilliax to work with, but the deck hands are good at cleaning those up. Or cleaning the, the mm -hmm. second half of the Zilliax up. He can buy time. He can prep into SI. Um, into... And then what? Uh, well, I was thinking Dagger. Uh-huh. Uh and oh, that's not gonna get yeah, there, is it? That's the thing. Because I was thinking, you know, get the then get the green skin live, and then maybe go stabilize the tur turns later with Zilliax and and Life Drinker. But I don't think you get to those turns. So importantly, he does have two ways of healing, right? He has Life Drinker and Zilliax, so he, he can survive a bit longer against Blood Trail's hand. But the the question is, how much longer? Also, we can see Wanted just deals with the second part of Zilliax yeah. after the Divine Shield, right? So Wanted is going to be very nice for Blood Trail to avoid that three heal. And every card you see once a rogue has mired, you are you, you that you can deal with. Mm -hmm. You you are just one step closer to just winning the game. Yeah. But Blood Trail, I think, wants to do something here that sets up a kill next turn. So is there a way he would actually go for that? If he yeah, if he preps, Prep wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good because he wants to get as much down as possible. Because he's got to think if my opponent plays Nomi. I might just die. Yep. So I need to set up a kill very, very exactly. quickly. Because he doesn't exactly know that, that Samuel Sao doesn't have Nomi. So he has to do the best he can do. Deadly Poison even to push the extra damage. Yeah. Next turn he can coin Eviscerate. Uh, also just play whatever he draws and Eviscerate. But, you know, worst case, somehow, yeah. if it's not playable... This is going to be lights out for Samuel Sao. <laughs> not a whole lot Samuel Sao can do about this, yeah. Latrell oh. takes the win, 2-1. Yeah, there it is. Pretty uh, again. I feel like the game that felt the closest was the game that Samuel Sao just just about won. Right. But the other two games, we saw that the weapon removal early is just backbreaking. You spend four mana on a pick, deal four, fantastic. But then we see that multiple times, like one mana removed, and then if you play the minion, that's also gone. And then also, Rogue can u utilize, say, three mana on a similar turn in a very, very efficient way. So, you know, great play from Blood Trail there. I'm lucky for Samuel Zhao, but Blood Trail takes the series two and one. We've only got one more match left, so you can go and grab a quick break, grab a drink, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 